Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rift Waters Fish Room, your YouTube home for awesome fish stuff. Today we're going to be taking a closer look and going through the care guide of one of my favorite African cichlids, the beautiful Frontosa. And this is a truly magnificent fish. I mean, just look at it. That thing is beautiful. That blue body with those thick black bars and those long trailing fins. This fish is a sight to behold. And they also get big, which is great because here in the fish room, we love big, colorful fish. And we'll touch on size and tank requirements later in the video. For now, let's talk about where these fish are from and what they actually are. Like we mentioned before, this is an African cichlid, but more specifically, it comes from Lake Tanganyika, one of the great rift lakes of Eastern Africa. And this fish can be found pretty much all around that lake. And depending on the location, you'll have slightly different color variations, all just different shades of blue. But we used to think those different color morphs were all of the same species, Cyphotilapia frontosa. But recently, some of those color variations have been separated into another species, Cyphotilapia gibberosa. And that's what we have here. This is the Mpembwe blue color variant of Cyphotilapia gibberosa. But unless you're an ichthologist, you're not really going to care about the species because all frontosa are pretty much the same, except for slight differences in the blue coloration. They all require the same water parameters. So let's touch on that. Being from an African rift lake, they're going to want hard water with a high pH. We keep ours in Indiana tap water, which is affectionately known as liquid rock. My pH is 8.2, sometimes up to 8.4, and the water is very hard. And these fish do wonderful in that water. But like most fish in the aquarium hobby, they can be much more adaptable and you'll have more flexibility than some people might lead you to believe. You can definitely keep Frontosa in softer water with a lower pH. How low? Well, I don't have the personal experience to tell you that exactly, but I would not be afraid to keep these in water as low as 7.0. And in the worst case, you can always just add some crushed coral to the substrate to add some buffering capacity and increase the hardness and pH. But let's talk about temperature. I keep my frontosa at 77, 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Some people will tell you they can go a few degrees lower than that. Some people will tell you they like to keep them a couple degrees warmer than that. I think anywhere in the 75 to 80 range, they'll do great and they can tolerate lower or warmer than that for short periods, but I wouldn't keep them long term in anything outside that range. But let's move on to the most important part about keeping Frontosa, and that is understanding how big these fish actually get and how big of a tank they need. The adult males in our tank here are about 12, maybe 13 inches, but there's reports of the males growing a little bigger than that even. The females stay smaller in that 8 to 10 inch range, but even so, that's a big fish in its own right. And beyond that, you have to keep a group of these fish together. They don't do very well on their own or in small numbers. They do best when in groups of at least six, preferably eight or more. So combine that with their size and you're going to need a pretty big tank. We keep our colony of 15 frontosa in an 8 foot long, 280 gallon aquarium. But not everyone has a tank that big, so let's talk about tank minimums. You can keep this species quite successfully in a standard 125 gallon tank. Now in a tank that size, you're going to be on the lower end of the number of fish you can keep, and your male to female ratio will be critical. In a 125, I would recommend one male with five females. You might be able to throw a second male in there and just feel out the aggression and be prepared to act if they start attacking each other. But as far as tank size and water volume, a 125 can work. Definitely don't do anything less than that. Preferably, you'd get a 180. And then you could add a few more females and an extra male or two. Whatever tank size you go with, you are going to want to aim for a female heavy ratio. Same as most African cichlids. But unlike most African cichlids, the female frontosa look almost just as good as the males, so that's not really an issue. 
And speaking of stocking, we'll touch a bit on tank mates. Now that likely warrants a video all on its own because there is a pretty wide selection of tank mates with Frontosa. Surprisingly so, considering it's a large cichlid. But you can boil it down to pretty much any medium-sized fish that won't go out of its way to attack the Frontosa. The Frontosa themselves are pretty mild-mannered as far as cichlids go, so they'll likely leave alone most tank mates. And while they do have pretty big mouths, and you always want to kind of follow the rule that if a fish can fit in the mouth of another fish, you probably shouldn't mix them. Even so, I've seen Frontosa kept with some relatively small fish. Other Tanganyikan cichlids don't get as big as the Frontosa, but I've seen them kept together pretty well. I've also seen the Frontosa kept with Malawian cichlids, specifically peacocks or some of your more mild-mannered haplochromines. I don't do that because I prefer to avoid mixing lakes, but I've seen it done. I've also seen Frontosa kept with rainbow fish, believe it or not. So there's probably a whole other video there. But in short, I suggest leaving the Frontosa all on their own. This is a beautiful fish and you need a lot of space for them. So I would just get a 125 or preferably a 180 and have only Frontosa in it. That's gonna be a stunning tank. Outside of tank size and stocking levels, they're a pretty straightforward fish to keep. Just make sure you keep up with your water quality, give them good strong filtration, because these fish do have a high bio load, just given their size. And you know, make sure you feed them a nice variety of quality foods. Ours have grown very well on a staple of pellet foods, from extreme big fella to north fin cichlid formula, and occasionally the krill formula. And when they were smaller, we even fed them Hikari Viber Bites, and they loved it. They're not fussy eaters. But they can be fussy with one other area that we haven't touched on yet, and that's lighting. These fish do not need bright lights, and in fact, they do not want bright lights. If you have too strong of a lighting on your tank, these fish will hide most of the time. So there is a bit of a challenge up front in finding that right balance between bright enough to enjoy your fish and see their great coloration, but also not too bright as to scare them so that you never see them out. But once you get that dialed in, you're good to go. And with that, that's about all you need to know to successfully keep Frontosa. I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. And I hope I maybe inspired some of you to consider keeping this fish in the future. It's a beautiful fish, and it's so worthwhile. You will never regret jumping on the Frontosa bandwagon. If you have any questions about this species, please drop them in the comments below. I love talking with you guys about all things fishy. And I can't wait to see you on the next video. Take it easy, everyone.